change way of life. So Walter, welcome to the program. Boy, after that introduction, I can hardly wait to hear what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited because you and I get to talk about some of this stuff often. Um, and, you know, you and I talk a lot of times after I see your columns, which really is where this book right. came from. So can you tell us who you are as far as in the Grange and then um, a little bit about your columns that you do that inspired this, this book? Okay, yeah. Um, I, I give myself the nickname Cage Rattler um, <laughs> because I think that's one of the jobs and, and that's part of what the book is about. But um, in terms of the Grange, I am I hold many offices, as don't we all, at the local level. Um, I am program director, lecturer of Valley Grange. That's probably my primary job. Um, and I am the Maine State Grange Communications Director. I think it's probably five or six years ago they uh, we had a publicity director and a webmaster and those two jobs got combined um, and uh, I got talked into being the communications director which has been an interesting and fun experience uh, one of the projects I started fairly early on was kind of driven by some comments and questions that I was getting particularly by new Grangers um, I'm not a 50-year Granger I'm probably close to a 20-year Granger, so I'm a newbie. <laughs> uh, and um, what I was finding was a lot of people didn't really understand what the Grange was about. And I'm not just talking about non-Grangers. I think Grangers themselves. I mean, young people um, <laughs> very often say, why do we do something? And, and so often nobody really knew the answer to that. So I, I kind of got the idea of starting this Exploring Traditions column. It's, it's a monthly column um, that would explore traditions would explore the Grange and what I call the Grange way of life um, because I think Grange is more about a way of life than it is about membership if that makes sense and yeah, I mean it's important to be a member for us right but um, we're not just a member once a month just like you're not a, a faithful person on Sunday mornings when you're in a yeah. church yeah, exactly. And, and um, you look at, well, <laughs> I guess to finish answering your question, um, I started doing that and I really had a lot of fun with it. And what I found was I was learning a lot in the process. I, I love to learn. And, and, you know, that's a value of the Grange. I've, I've said to people that one of the values of becoming a Granger is you're going to learn a lot if you pay attention, <laughs> um, particularly in, in the degree work and in, in some of the ritual stuff that we're doing, the lessons are just so powerful. And, and as I researched to write the column, it was like, wow, this is even cooler than I thought it was. Um, so I did that for like three years. And I honestly don't remember now what triggered it. It may have been you. <laughs> I know you and I have done some talking about it. Um, and it's like, why not take those three years worth of columns and, and assemble them into a book? Um, and that's what basically happened. It's, it, it's not highly structured. It really is just three, well, 36 or so, maybe 38 uh, essays, if you will, about what's this strange way of life about? You know? Yeah, it's a what really easy brain? read. What do, we do? Um, what do we do at meetings? Right. It's a really easy read. And it also just really gives a very interesting look as you mentioned, kind of a, uh, it's an insider outsider perspective. And I always think that those are, are the most interesting because once you're almost too steeped in it, uh, you can't see some of the nuance uh, yeah. or you can't see why people would not understand certain parts of it. So, um, so, you know, this week, um, boy, this, this past six weeks has been such a doozy <laughs> on all of us. Oh. And, um, part of, of that has been reassessing what Grange means um, because we know we're doing a lot of community service and things, but we're not meeting, uh, you know, right. we're taking safety and precautions and boy, some of that ritual and tradition is being really thrown against the wall. Um, so you've been writing your column even during this. I mean, and your column has not stopped um, to, to look and explore what it means. So, um, I was hoping that you would talk a little bit about what came from this week's column, uh, because I think it's so relevant. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I kind of have intentionally, as communications director, one of the things I've struggled with is how, what do we do on the website about this? And I made a decision fairly early on that we were not going to try to be a, a resource 
um, regarding information about the virus. First of all, things change too quickly. Um, I'm not a full-time employee of the Grange. I'm, I basically am a volunteer. Um, so I, I, I won't say I downplayed it. What I decided instead was that we needed to have more frequent good news kinds of messages and thought-provoking questions. Because I think if you look at what's happening, without getting really conceptual here, if you look at what's happening with this, um, we're sort of in different stages, I think, from a sociology, culture point of view. And I think people are starting to question things. It's like, you know, does this really make sense? Gee, I never realized, you know, I haven't thought about, it. oh my God, I can't live without television, um, <laughs> and so on. So, uh, <laughs> so we, we, I think we all knew that social media websites, the internet were, were gonna be important in this and, and the early things about, you know, can we meet online and so forth. Um, but one of the things that's great about the Grange is the consistency and the dependability of ritual and tradition. <clears throat> that doesn't change. Um, one of kind of my favorite pieces in the book is, um, well, you asked me to talk, let me, let me, I'll come back to that. Remind me to talk about the welcome mat. I know you and I talked a little bit about that. Um, but what I was driving at today was, <clears throat> or yesterday actually, when I wrote the column was, yeah, I think what one of the things that's happening as a result of the pandemic is that we're being forced to examine what cultivating connections really means. How, what, and, and, and in the column, I, I kind of made a general, like broke it into two parts. We have an internal connection, which I kind of consider within the Grange. It's like, how are we connected as members? Um, and how do we stay connected given the limitations of not being able to meet? And then we have an external connection. Hopefully we have external connections, which are those connections that the Grange and its members makes in the community. Um, and, and that's been a challenge even for me locally as a program director or lecturer for Valley Grange. A lot of the things we do, we did in person. Um, and it's very difficult to find a way to keep doing those. Um, so I, I think it's an opportunity to, to look at those connections both internally and externally. Um, we typically, and I, all generalities are false, including that one, but we typically are pretty good at the internal connections. Uh, that's one of the attractions of the Grange. I mean, I, <laughs> here, and I personally have described it as a club, um, because if you go back in history, that one of the big values of the Grange was the fact that it was a social outlet for farmers who were living very isolated. I mean, think about how, how there's a parallel here that's almost ironic. I mean, it's like we've gone back 150 years. Um, so, so that part has been a challenge, but the bigger challenge is, I think for us as, a, as an organization, the bigger challenge is what are our connections? Well, how are we connecting with the community? Is it just a building sitting somewhere in the community uh, where people go and do weird things once a month or twice a month or whatever? Or, or is it really part of the community? Yeah, I think we've talked a little bit about the fact that, you know, if you're not, not doing anything, let's say a year ago, um, mm -hmm. The idea that you now, you, maybe you're not even uh, meeting in full form or you're, you're just having very um, irregular meetings or, or I don't want to call them lazy meetings, but informal no. um, <laughs> yeah. type setting, like, like that type of thing. It's very hard to- Traditional meetings. Yeah, it's very hard to come back to some of these ideas that are part of our ritual and tradition um, and put them into practice in some ways. Um, and so I think the fact that your book and your columns analyze what's important in those structures and can they be done in different ways and still be meaningful is really important. When you were, when you've been writing this stuff, what's one of the things that you've figured out that you might be able to do a hundred different ways and still have meaning? And what's one thing that you're like, it's got to be the way it's written or else it just won't convey as well. Not sure if I understand the question. Um, talk a little more, if you can. Sure. Um, so I'm just thinking, I mean, you've evaluated um, a, a number of different of our 
traditions, whether it be the things that we carry, staves and uh, things like that, and, and the emblems on top of them, um, the way that we open and close and some of the words that we say there. Um, is there anything that you've figured out that we could either do without or we could change the way we do and it's still okay versus something that you just couldn't ah, do okay. any other way that we have? Yeah, I, I, I guess uh, all of a sudden all the synapses are firing. You, you, you did your job. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, I think it starts with recognizing that we don't have to throw out. In fact, we shouldn't throw out everything that we've always done because the parallels are, um, are, are just ironic. They're just too ironic. I mean, Part, I go back to this isolation thing. One of the reason, one of the things that contributed to the Granger's success was the fact that farmers were isolated, just like we are now. Uh, now, the solution to that then was let's have a Grange Hall. <laughs> go to the Grange Hall on some kind of basis. I mean, I my understanding is there were Pomona meetings that lasted entire weekends. Um, because it was just a way for people to get together. Uh, so how different is it? I mean, it's different in the sense that, well, we can't go to meetings right now. We can't have potluck suppers, um, but we can we connect in some way? And, and, and I think it really goes back to un, more of an understanding of the fundamental values of the Grange. You know, there's a great thing in the Grange, I don't know if I've got it right handy, um, where it talks about, the fact that the Grange isn't meant to interfere with the farmer's daily life. It's actually about his daily life. Uh, and I'm kind of wandering off topic here a little bit. But, but um, so much of the things, <laughs> I've been joking, we had a power failure here, and we lost power for like four days. Um, and uh, it reminded me, not that I was alive then, but, but it reminded me of rural electrification. I mean, um, you know, the, you, people got so excited because somebody dropped off a pole at the end of the road, and they were going to get electricity. Um, and and how much how much like today? How much is today like that? So yeah, you know, I don't know. Can you have an online potluck supper? I don't know. I mean, yeah, you can. Um, <laughs> my brother lives in, in the Washington area, and they're having happy hour every night. And they all go out and sit in their driveways and maintain the, the six-foot distance and, and yell back and forth to each other to have that social connection. Um, not certainly encouraging anybody to break the spirit of social distancing, um, but it, we, I, th I think th that we have to be careful that we don't just collapse, uh, that we that we think, I, one of the saddest things I saw recently, and I won't name the Grange, was a post on a Facebook page for a specific Grange that said, we are currently ceasing all activity. How, how can you do that if you're relevant? You, you, you just gotta get creative. Um, I, you know, to take, <laughs> there's some really, the, the pandemic is bringing out the best in people and the worst in people. And I think that's true for us as well. I mean, it's going, one of the things the pandemic will do is it will bring out the best ranges and it may call attention to the worst ranges they, they, because they won't, they, won't, they won't even be noticed. If you weren't relevant to the community prior to, I don't know what the date is, but there's even not agreement on that. But if you weren't relevant to the community prior to the pandemic, you can't suddenly become relevant. Um, it, it should be just a natural thing. Um, and I don't, I, I kind of, I think I drifted away from the spirit of your question a little bit, but all of those, those truths that we learn in the degree work and in the ritual and in the installation of officers, Are even more valid today than they were, and it just it it really just tap. I've been struck here. I'll give you one example, and I haven't got the solution to this yet. <laughs> um, one of the programs we do at Valley Grange is bookworming, and it's one of my favorite programs because I love kids. And basically, the short version of that program is twice a week, a Granger goes to school for an hour. They are assigned to a second or third grade classroom. The teacher picks the child 
the child picks the book and they go and they sit with a granger and they read one of the bookworm and they read to that bookworm for 15, 20 minutes. And I, it is such an awesome program. I could spend two hours just talking about that. Well, the kids aren't in school anymore. <laughs> so our bookworms are all sitting home with nothing to do, if you will. I mean, how do we, is there any way that we can continue that? And I think there might be, um, that unfortunately, not a lot of our bookworms are technologically savvy, but we could do kind of a flip of that. We could do story time where the Granger sits and reads a book, a children's book, and records that. And then we post that uh, on the Valley Grange website, and it becomes a homeschooling resource, but it also is the bookworm program just being delivered in, in a different way. I, I, that, that, that's one of the first examples that comes to my mind because I've been struggling with that. I mean, it's I like, you know, really how, how can we continue to be proud of it? Yeah, I think yeah, it's a really yeah. good example because it is just figuring out how to take a program that's effective and, and moving it into a different medium. Um, yeah. So, so one of the things that I've been kind of reflecting on, um, you know, I carry my, my handy dandy little blue book with me oh, yes. um, a lot. And I mean, okay. The first words that tell you that you are in a grange, the hour of labor has arrived and the work of another day demands our attention. Let each repair to his or her allotted station. Right. We're all struggling with the idea of working from home. Those of us who have been doing it for a while, maybe less than others, but the hour of labor has arrived. Yeah. It's 8.30 in the morning and you need to be awake and moving and, and sitting at a computer. Let each repair to his or her allotted station. I mean, there are lessons that, that are in here that can be so applicable, in my opinion, to what we are facing or what we just do in general. I mean, sure. it, it may not make sense for me then to think about whether the worthy steward is going to ascertain if everyone <laughs> in my office is allowed to be here because, well, it's just me. But right. those words themselves can motivate you to think that it is now time to get serious and get to work. And, um, and I think, again, like when I look at your book, I, I come to some of these moments where I think, boy, that that is where we see the relevance. Um, one of the things that, that it draws me to just is um, a chapter that you have called Hope Versus Belief, which of course is based on a, a, a blog post that you had. And it starts, the question has been asked, how long will the Grange live? I believe it will, will live as long as it continues to serve the welfare of agriculture and the nation. Whenever it becomes ingrown and selfish and the members look on it only as a means for bringing them pleasure, entertainment, or profit, it will fade away. I'm going to read down a little bit. And so, I, I'm going to stop you, Amanda, just to point out the fact that that isn't me. I know. The, <laughs> that what, is what from, you're reading is a quote. Right. That, <laughs> and, that, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to finish the quote out here. But to those who find pleasure in doing something for the common good, the Grange provides an instrument both effective and satisfying. Through it, we can jointly find our entertainment and our pleasure in service, while at the same time, we can advance the interests of our neighbors and ourselves in the field of health, education, business, and in almost limitless ways. Through the Grange, we have an opportunity to give, and the more we give, the more we gain. So you can tell me, where that, does that quote come from? That, that actually comes from the then national uh, master, um, I can't remember his first name, his last name was Goss, right? G O S S, um, and and uh, the the introduction to that quote um, in the book is I was doing a television interview this was a few years ago actually, um, and the reporter asked me a question at the end um, or towards the end that that I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> uh, she said, "What is your hope for the Grange?" And I think I fumbled a, a pretty decent answer. Uh, <laughs> But I really wasn't happy with it, and, and uh, I guess I, I don't know if I, well, anyway, I really wasn't happy with the answer, um, so I thought, you know, that's something I need to think about. What is my hope for the Grange? And lo and behold, I stumble on to almost the identical question asked of a state master, um, and, and I'm not sure how that all came together in retrospect, but 
I think one of the distinctions that we have to make is there's a difference between hope, hope and belief. Um, and what we hope for the Grange really isn't as important as what we believe for the Grange. Because I hear a lot of people kind of whining, I guess, about, oh, you know, the Grange is so hard. We can't afford to heat the hall in the winter. And we're having trouble getting members. And you know what? That's a belief <laughs> that's hopeless. I mean, there, why would you have any hope if you believe those things are true? Um, and, and I get to work with and, and, and see and talk to a lot of different granges around the state. And the granges that are surviving, they don't have time for that. The granges that are, are thriving don't have time for that. They just believe they have a reason. That there's work to do to use the, the, the opening that you did. We have to do the labors of the day. So you have over here a grange that can't afford to heat their hall in the winter. And over here, you've got a grange that's providing several thousand dollars of heat assistance to people in their community. What's the difference? The difference is belief. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I belief and commitment and uh, oh, oh, go ahead. I, I thought you cut no, off. <laughs> no, I, I think that that's one of the, the examples of where this book makes you really look at um, what what is the Grange mean and, and where does it it belong in the sphere of your work and your life. I, I don't know that everyone feels this way, but I feel like most of us have kind of a charted course of what we hope to do in our life. Um, and we have a belief of what we can do. Uh, we hope that those two marry together at some point. And so right. part of that hope and belief, right, um, includes either milestones or things that are platforms platform. to help you launch yourself into actually accomplishing tasks and for many of us i think the grange is one of those platforms that helps launch us in to uh completing those tasks in order to make the measure of the life that we we envision um and that impact yeah but and i i think that's true and, and you know that i my background is organization design and development um, and, and you're describing you're, you're like touching my heart because you're describing what organization design and development is supposed to all be about but guess what I mean the, the danger with that is it becomes too complicated so my thing is what today okay today um, we're gonna start the leaders of the day what can I do today and, and I go back to that and I don't know why I didn't think of this before but go back to the bookworm thing you know what I could do because there are some stores open I could go buy some kids' books, and I could take those books, and, and we have to be careful here about confidentiality and personal relationships and all that other stuff, but I could take those books. I could actually take them to the school and, and have the school send those books home, give them, give, give them to some kids. Uh, I, I was thinking this morning, <laughs> you know these little library things, the little boxes that where people can exchange books? Gosh, why don't we have one of those on the front porch of our Grange Hall? Why don't we have a bunch of kids' books in the, in 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 there? Um, get people to donate, and we were actually doing a program like that a few years ago. But get people to donate them, and then announce to all these parents that are struggling with homeschooling: stop by the Grange Hall. <laughs> you know, there are books there, free books for your kids. Um, I, I, to me, right now, especially, that's the kind of thing that we need to do. We 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 don't need to because we can't have a meeting, but, but let's even go with an online meeting. We don't need to have an online meeting and have this long discussion about the purpose of the Grange and, and our mission and, and all this other stuff. Uh, that's gonna be an exercise in futility. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's kind of like <laughs> one of the, one of the uh, I think I, this is actually in the book somewhere. Um, I talk about, it's like weeding a garden that nothing is planted in. You know, it, it becomes pointless. So what can I do today? I, I remember once having somebody in, in our Grange, Valley Grange here in Guilford, said to me, we're not doing enough for the old people. And my reply to them was, what do you want to do? You know, if you've got a passion, we've got a place. Um, that, and that's what one of the really cool things about the Grange is that we're not locked into the things that, that we have to do or must do. Um, you can do almost anything. I mean, there's probably some practical limitations, but but you could do almost anything. Um, 
know, I mean, you know, we, uh, in fact, I was really excited to see in the, in the mention of East Sangerville Granger in Maine. They had a three-year-old kid who was having a birthday and he was all excited as much as a three-year-old can be about having a party and they can't have the party. So what does the Grange do? And it was very spontaneous. As I understand it, they put together a parade, you know, and, and, and it was actually one of the first parades that we heard about during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and they all drove by holding up signs and, and one of the TV stations actually picked up on it because it was something different than new. Um, so, you know, what do you want to do? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, we have that um, story in our upcoming issue of Good Day Magazine. It's right here on page 71. Uh, and you know, what an adorable story. And a three-year-old who has been coming to Grange meetings, like many of the people out there listening, since they were born pretty much, um, getting something that is irreplaceable because a couple members said, we're not limited to just what's in this blue book, right? But we're inspired yeah. by it. So I wanna read something else from one of your other um, pieces in this book that I think we actually dovetailed into really well. Okay. Um, this is from a chapter called Fuller and Richer Experience, or Existence, I'm sorry. Yeah. And um, in it, you start out by picking a couple pieces from different degrees and different things and uh, kind of your, putting them in modern context, but it, in the part it says, I wonder what a caterpillar thinks. Oh, does that that's matter if it does? Favorite chapters. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. So I wonder what a caterpillar thinks, or for that matter, if it does. Does it know what its future is going to be? Nature clearly has programmed it to wrap itself up in a mummy-like state without questioning whether or not it's a good idea. The caterpillar doesn't have to decide to give up its existence and become a butterfly. That's a grand plan because if caterpillars were like people, the situation would be a lot different. Many caterpillars would be quite content to remain caterpillars. Some would fear becoming a butterfly and needing to fly. They would be quite content to crawl about munching on leaves, but some would look forward to the adventure and the freedom that comes with flying. They would be willing to go through the metamorphosis required. Those who remain caterpillars would cling to their existence and perhaps even complain that there aren't enough caterpillars left because everyone is too busy being a butterfly. So I'm, I love, I, I love I, I, Yes, I, that was but, a fun piece to write. Um, and and uh, that two responses to that. One is if I ever decide to write kids books, we're, I'm going to write a book about cat, caterpillars and butterflies. <laughs> but my other response is that isn't that the Grange? I mean, we have some Granges that are becoming butterflies, and we have some Granges that just are going to stay a caterpillar, and they're going to complain about the butterflies. And we need more caterpillars. And this situation is really um, helping, I think, people figure out, um, you know, when and where it's time to evolve um, in some ways, yeah. and um, deciding whether or not they want to do it. But I think that as much as it's easy to say that there are some Granges who are going to decide not to evolve um, or not to do anything at this time. Um, it's important to figure out ways to encourage that they do or to look at them and say, but you've already evolved right. once or you've already done something outside of your comfort zone. Maybe it was 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. Do it mm -hmm. again. So how, yeah. how do, um, how do we take some of the stuff that we have from this book, the thing that you were kind of disseminating into that book, um, and look at that encouragement? Where, where from here can we find the encouragement that you can think of? There are just too many places to mention. Um, th there's um, <laughs> another one of my favorite chapters looks at, I think it's um, two sentences or three sentences in one degree. Um, and I think I wrote 700 words based on two sentences because it, 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 you just have to understand what those lessons are. Um, and, and the reality, I mean, I, uh, we had several years ago, uh, the then commissioner of agriculture here in Maine came and spoke at um, one of our state conferences, state conventions and Walter Whitcomb. And, and I was really impressed by Walter saying, you know, and, and he's not really a Grange expert, but he said, 
what better time is there? When are the values of the Grange more important than right now? Um, and, and he was kind of alluding to the, the divis divisiveness, I guess you could say, that we have in the country. Because what reunification? Hello, right? If one of the things the Grange helped do was reunite the country after the Civil War, gee whiz, can we do that again? I mean, that's a big picture, certainly. Um, but um, <laughs> I, one of my biggest fears with this pandemic is the Granges that aren't meeting in any way, shape, or form. You know, the, the Grange that puts up, we have ceased all activities. The question that Grange needs to ask themselves, is anybody going to notice? <laughs> we we need to get noticed and we need to find ways to get noticed in a very positive way. And, and um, um, one of the things that, that if we're talking about cultivating connections, I think one of the things we really need to be looking at is cultivating connections outside the Grange. And, and we kind of jumped away from that when I was talking at the beginning about the inside and the, or the inside and the outside. Um, because I think well, one of the things we should should do, and I do this occasionally, is go to and, and pick an organization. And you can do this with individuals as well. But And I do this all the time at the school. I'll go to the school and say, what do you need? What do you need? How can we help you? How can we give you something you need? And we've developed a number of programs at the school just based on the answer to that question. We've become important to the school. Every kid in that school knows who the Grange is or what the Grange is. Um, the kids, when we do our dictionary day, those kids actually come to the Grange Hall. They make a field trip to the Grange Hall to learn more about the Grange. And, and we actually go over the staves and, and what they represent. And yeah, they're farmer's tools, but, you know, uh, they also help us understand and remind us of, of the important values of the Grange. And, and I've even kidded with the kids and said, hey, hey, how would you like a set of these in your classroom? Because what better way to manage your classroom than to have four visual reminders that we need to weed out, prune out, that we need to um, keep the, the owl's eyes and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and once I get going, I sometimes lose track of where I am here. But, but I, th I think that's part of our answer, even here in the pandemic, is who needs our help? There was a group formed here in Maine very quickly um, on Facebook, on social media, a uh, couple of volunteer ladies who <laughs> got their hands full. But um, what they did was they created a Facebook, I think it's a page, might be a group, um, that basically is exactly what I'm saying. It's, it said, anybody that has a problem or has a need in this pandemic, post it here. Um, wow. <laughs> um, so you get somebody, and, and it range, ranges from, I need to figure out how to file my taxes, which is kind of related, but to, we don't know where our next meal is coming from. And then you'll see somebody private, uh, private message me, give me you know, your address, and they're going to drop food off. Um, so I've looked at that and I've said, gee whiz, why could, the, I mean, we can't have a meeting, but could we start a group like that? Uh, if we're truly connected to the community, could we start a Facebook page that says, what do you need? You know, we've got hopefully Grange members, but it won't be an interest. I'm going to jump back to the bookworm program for a minute. I think there are more non-Grangers volunteering in the bookworm program than there are Grangers. Now, that obviously doesn't address a membership issue. But it's an example, um, and I said this recently on television, with, uh, we were talking about one of our activities at the Grange. Volunteering is changing. People aren't marrying organizations to volunteer. They're looking for outlets that they can manage. Um, so that's another avenue to go. And, and I, 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 ooh, I'm tempted, so tempted, <laughs> to start that kind of a group using Valley Grange's website and our Facebook page as a, as a mechanism for doing that. I think it's just um, one of the things I most appreciate about, about the book and about the, when we talk, um, is that you, well, well, we understand, I think some of the limitations, some of our Granges have 
um, there's always a way that you're showing the positive when you're talking outside of the grain, especially mm -hmm. to, to the press and things like that. And so, I mean, just for me, that's that's a huge thing of just remaining positive outwardly to to make sure that people find themselves um, interested, intrigued to come into the halls and and potentially be part of the membership. Yeah. Um, so I want to I want to take one more slice from the book. <laughs> sure. Um, and I, I think that it's it's kind of a summary, and then we can just chat for a few minutes. But um, it's in a chapter called "Defining Relevance." So, oh yes. <laughs> yes. And the, the snippet says the Grange didn't come into being because the founders thought it would be a good idea to create a fraternal organization and perform a ritual. The Grange <laughs> came into being because there was a need a need to organize farmers, to create community, and to labor together for the common good. So I think that's kind of what we've been talking about here, um, yeah. is that you know it's great that we could be in our halls right now, opening our meetings, um, you know, marching with a flag, um, presenting the Bible, doing opening songs, reading our reports, and doing closing work, but what's more important is that we're meeting that need that that the need right now in a lot of ways is this connection um it's amazing to me how many of these porch sitting sessions a lot of places that are not as cold as here right now yeah, right. having um yeah. you know that people are really coming back to part of their need in their being is connecting with other people um so part of our reason for being right now is connecting people. I mean, we could not have picked a better, um, you know, theme for this year. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, it really was. It really was. was it was place. just amazing. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, I, I think that need, so that need would, has uh, been, oh, sorry, <laughs> that need has been there all along. And the, the, what the pandemic is doing is it's popping it up to the surface. Um, it, it just remind me, I guess it's almost, is it, two, it might be two years ago, we uh, gave a community citizen award to uh, our local, uh, one of our local uh, sheriff's uh, lieutenant, actually, Lieutenant Kane, no reason to keep that a secret. Uh, and um, the night we honored him, we always have a community potluck supper, um, and a bunch of people showed up for that. Um, and the, a group of kids from the school, the girls softball team, I, I think it was, uh, showed up in uniform and, and they gave him a group hug. And, and, but what was really cool was after supper was over, one of the, of course, I know the kids schools. <laughs> and, you know, I, it, was, it was an awakening in, in a sense for me because whenever we have people from the community in, it seems like they always want to help do the dishes. Um, and I think it's, that's part of that hunger that, that we haven't yet, I don't know, we haven't yet verbalized. We, we, I think we've discovered it, but we haven't yet verbalized the fact that, because I, I hear people say that, uh, that they really miss the social contact. They missed, miss not being able to see people, not being able to touch people. And it can be very frustrating. I mean, I dreaded, actually, I don't go out much, but, but when I go out, I dreaded running into one of the kids, uh, from, you know, the little kids from school, because they're going to want a hug. They're going to want, they're going to want to be closer than six feet. Um, so this has really heightened that need. And uh, it, it, and it is a challenge because it's, it, 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 there's not an easy fix. Uh, there have been some studies done that show that, uh, and I don't remember the exact number, so don't don't hold me to this. But I think the, the today's young family with kids, the parents only have like maybe two hours of discretionary time a month. They're not going to come to a two-hour Grange meeting. <laughs> um, it's just not going to happen. They're being pulled in too many other directions for one thing, but. You know, how, how, I mean, gosh, I don't know. You know I, I have, to, I love to think outside the box. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking of this earlier today. I, this is a true story. There was a company back when I was doing organization development work. There was a company that <laughs> instituted a policy 
that whenever a meeting was held, everybody had to wear fuzzy bunny slippers. Now that sounds kind of crazy at first, but their point was, how seriously do we take each other when we're wearing fuzzy bunny slipper? I mean, it changes, it truly changes the way you feel about yourself and the other people. And no, I don't have a pair on now, although I am wearing slippers. Um, by the way, I should note that my uh, makeup and uh, hairstylist girl couldn't, she, she's quarantined, so she couldn't fix me up for this you know, thing. <laughs> but, but I'm going to go with that excuse kind of, too for the whole time. That line. kind yeah. of thinking is, <laughs> you know, uh, um, that kind of thinking is what's needed. We really, we got to get excited. We, uh, and, 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 and you're right. I mean, focus on the upside, not, not the downside. Um, you know, there's an old story about uh, two salesmen, they were shoe salesmen, who were sent to Africa um, to, to explore the market there. And the first guy uh, called or wrote or whatever, emailed back and said, ah, we're not going to do anything here. Nobody wears shoes. And the other guy emailed back and said, what a fantastic market here. Nobody wears shoes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, it's really how you look at things. Um, and and uh, I think we really, we really have to rethink in some cases uh, how we're looking at things. We have to get to the welcome mat thing um, because there is a chapter about that too. Um, and, and I explain that if you come visit uh, the house here, you'll see, unless somebody's fixed it, that the welcome mat is what most people would say backwards. It, it doesn't welcome you when you come in, it welcomes you when you leave. Um, and that's quite intentional uh, because again, you know, it's like the, the choose no shoes thing, um, is to think about how, how where, where is, where, where, do, where do we do our thing? You know, the, where do we do the labors of the day? Do we do them sitting in the Grange Hall or do we do them out in the community? Um, last Christmas, um, we had a wonderful program at our Grange Hall. We do it every year. It's a tradition called um, Supper for Breakfast, or Breakfast for Supper, rather. And it's kind of a potluck supper, but instead we all kind of work together and fix breakfast for each other. Um, and we always have a good time. And uh, there's usually some exchanging of gifts and so on. And when we left the, uh, the, that meeting, and drove home, I realized that that was the same night as the tree lighting ceremony in the center of Guilford, the town. And I, I really felt bad about that because I thought, you know what, next year, maybe we ought to have our Grange meeting at the tree lighting ceremony. <laughs> I mean, obviously it wouldn't be a Grange meeting as such, but imagine showing up there and then we could wear sashes or not wear sashes, but imagine showing up there and being part of a community event. That, that's, that's that connection thing. Um, yeah, I mean, we all are in this together. That's, that's coming up a lot now in the pandemic. We're all in this together, but um, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, we <laughs> even we have- First word, word from our sponsor. I was going to say, we even, yeah, it, well, yes, Grange Foundation is the sponsor for these. Um, and we even have shirts that say it. And so you can buy your shirt on one. I'll make sure to put that nice in there. Nice segue. Good, yeah. job. Good yeah. job. Yeah. And, and, and I, it wasn't intentional, quite frankly, but I'll take credit for it. Um, by the way, we do have to put in a plug for the book before we're finished. <laughs> I figure we do that as soon as you, you finish this train of thought. I, by the way, have to tell you that I see that. Um, one of our newest um, lecturers advisory board members, which is a brand new thing that Chris uh, Hamp just announced today as part of the patrons chain, right. Elliot Wilsner from New York, he's the youth member, said he just ordered your book on oh. the store. So, <laughs> well, so the, you're, you're selling without even selling. So I, yeah. I, I guess I will yeah. ask you. I'll be able to eat at McDonald's. <laughs> I, I guess I will ask you. <laughs> Um, you know, finish your thought, and then do you mind telling us where we can get the book? <laughs> it was, oh, I mean, when you held up the shirt, um, I didn't get a chance. To, I, I have seen that. I haven't looked at it closely, quite frankly, but it kind of looks like a sun. With, and I don't know if that was intentional with all the virus the coming out. Um, this whole connecting thing, I mean, uh, there's a thing called concept mapping, which we don't have time to get into. But, but basically, we need to be thinking maybe like a spider web. Um, in terms of how does the Grange fit 
in the, well, we also have to define community. That gets a little tricky because <laughs> for a lot of different reasons. Again, we could do four hours on this, uh, but, but a spider web where uh, it's kind of like, what is that thing about, uh, oh, I can't remember, Brad Pitt, how, how many, how many um, steps are there between Brad Pitt and, and some of, it's kind of like that. How many steps are there between the Grange and pick some community organization? Um, the historical society, I don't know why that popped into my head, but but uh, and and that's kind of a neat little little synergistic thing because we have a tremendous amount of history going back to when our Grange was first chartered back. Oh gosh, I don't remember the year now, eighteen seventy something. Um, genealogy purposes, you know those are the kinds of connections that, that we would make under normal conditions. Um, but, you know, let's, let's reverse the welcome mat. Let's get out there. I mean, and, and let's not overcomplicate it. Let's not, God, you know, <laughs> we have programs coming out our ears. We don't need more programs. We need more action. Um, and, and, and it doesn't have to be big action. Give people, a job that doesn't overwhelm them. I mean, that's part of new membership. It's part of um, basic logic is when the, you, you get a new member, we, we actually are getting, we got, I should say, we got a new member of Valley Grange uh, this past week. And I'm trying to put him to work already um, because he has a lot to contribute. We just have to find that place to do that. Uh, do, people can do what, what they're capable of doing. Uh, I hear Granges and, and usually the successful ranges often say there's something for everybody to do here. Um, and I believe that there's cool. a chapter in the book about so that. Anyway, there's work for all. And the other chapter that I was going to mention. And that's right in the ritual, actually, or in the, um, I'm not sure, yeah. I can't remember exactly where, but it is. Um, it is there's work for everyone. There is. So, uh, Walter, there's, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap us here because I know that we're getting close in on the, the five o'clock oh, yes. when we start the ASL and deaf. Um, introduction to deaf culture. So um, tell us where we can find the book and um, then tell us, uh, I think, if, if you're thinking about a, a version two here. Well, <laughs> we can find the book lots of different places. Um, it is available through the Grange, I always have to be, let me get this right, the Grange. Grange Supply Store, which I have the link in our. Supply Store, National Grange Supply Store. And they actually make a few bucks on every copy that's sold through them. Um, they, um, it's also available, all the standard outlets, uh, Amazon is obviously a biggie, um, Barnes and Noble. Um, and, and you can get it. Uh, I have an online store, which, um, you know, I'm trying to think the easiest way to do that, wboomsma.com uh, or abbotvillagepress.com where you can order it online um, and uh, be happy to, to ship. I also have, you have to order it from, no, you can actually, yeah, you have to order it from my online store. Uh, if a Grange is interested in buying five or more copies, there's a pretty significant discount um, because I'm, I'd like to see this get out and, and into the hands of many people. I mean, I one of the Granges here in Maine uh, told me after they bought the book, the lecturer bought the book, she said that she was going to do a chapter of the book for not necessarily every month, but but to make a meeting out of a chapter of the book. And, and the idea would be kind of like what you and I have sort of done, read the chapter, you know, maybe the lecturer reads it out loud, uh, or they take turns reading or something, uh, and then have a conversation about it. Um, you know, what does that mean to us? What, what did, are we challenged? I mean, there's some fun chapters in there too. So, um, well, they're all fun. I like to think they're all fun. <laughs> they are all fun. <laughs> Well, I am really excited to see a few more people get this book in hand. Um, also, if they're looking for a, oh, a preview, maybe, of uh, a potential future issue or future edition. Um, that was another can... question I didn't answer. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have, I have several books in, in the pot, so to speak. Um, the version two isn't necessarily one of them. There is a book that I'm working on, which I hope to have out this fall, which may be of interest Rangers. Um, it will, and the, I don't know if I have a working title yet, but it's basically gonna be about the Words for Thirds Dictionary Program. 
um, and it'll be a how-to manual with um, explanations of how we put our program together, which I think is wildly successful. I mean, we have two schools, like a hundred and some kids that come to the Grange Hall and we get to explain the Grange and so on. And, but it'll have everything, uh, sample press releases and, and so on. I hope to have that out by this fall because fall is typically the time when most uh, Granges or, or, and other organizations do that Words for Thirds program. Mm -hmm. um, and another one coming about teaching. So yeah, there's some stuff in, the, in, in there. You would think that with being quarantined, I'd have all this extra time and I found that busier than normal, so. <laughs> Absolutely, I think we, we all are finding that. But if you're not, um, and you have some extra time on your hands, you can order Walter's book. Yep. Uh, Grange Supply Store is available at grangestore.org. Um, and also the multiple other avenues that he discussed, including Amazon and Abbott Village Press. Um, so, you know, you can Google exploring, can, exploring traditions, a Grange way of life, and I'm sure you'll find it. Um, Walter, thank you so much for coming on and for, for giving us your wisdom. And if anyone else is interested in learning more or, or reading more of Walter's work, they can also go to the Maine State Grange website and subscribe and they will get almost daily emails including about weekly uh, exploring tradition yeah. columns so walter thank you well, so yeah, much that's probably closer to monthly. <laughs> my pleasure um, i would i would close with um the you know people say what do we do during during pan, the, the pandemic uh well you know what place your faith in god nurture hope dispense charity and be noted for fidelity Absolutely. Thank you so much, Walter. We'll see you guys My here pleasure. in a few more minutes. Okay. Bye. <clears throat>